Yeah, well, first of all, this is the simplest thing. This is a recorder. And this is, if you think of a recorder when you're in school, it's about the same size, but it has more turns and like nicely turned furniture leg. That's actually because that's a Baroque style of instrument. This is a copy of instrument around 1600 or 1620. Um, so it's a little bit different. And this is, a, they used to just call this the flute or the flauto dolce. The, the recorder comes from the word remember, recordare, because that's what birds did to their mother's song. They remembered him. Um, this was probably the simplest of the simplest and was associated with shepherds and things. But people also played variations on this. So for instance, I might play a tune like, uh, uh, I might go like this. I messed up, but you get the idea. I could do divisions. Green Slaves, for instance, a favorite recorder piece. If I go. But another version of Green Slaves is. That's a variation on Green Sleeves. Same chord progression. Um, now, here's an instrument that has an oboe inside. Conical board chanter, it's got some tuning tape on there. You don't, pretend you don't see that. Um, and it... Because I play it in a bag, I'm blowing it back. I can't articulate with my tongue like I do on other wind instruments, as I did on the recorder. Two, 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 two. So I use my fingers. And listen to this. This is not going to be perfectly in tune because I didn't know you wanted me to play bagpipes today. So another way of tuning this is to play a very short melody note. Now, this is the chanter. It means that's the singer. The word cantare, you know that word, chant? That's the part that sings. And here is the drone. And you're going to notice this is, okay, this is made out of plastic and metal, but the original drones like this were just made out of cane with a tongue slid out by a knife. And that's the origin of the clarinet style reed. There's a kind of bagpipe called the hummelshin, which means the little bumblebee, because this is called the hummel, the drone. Uh, you know that composer hummel? And now I've got a shoelace that I borrowed from one of my students when my strap broke. This is just to keep my, this is gonna be one thing that's gonna be different from what you think of Highland pipes. My drone is gonna stick out in front. not in tune yet, but you get the idea. I've got a, my bag keeps the air pressure like a football, and then the air goes out of these two tubes. Name for the bagpipe, actually, there are lots of names. Doodlesack means duduksak, a, a flute with a sack, a pipe with a sack. But zamponia means sound together, symphonia. But another word, gaida, means goat. Gaida huh. comes from the Semitic root of the word gadi. Okay. Gadi, which is goat body. And you'll actually see that the guy that has the horns and the whole thing. And when you inflate that, little bones inflate out of that thing. And it looks. Yeah. This is the bagpipe chanter and removed from the bagpipe chanter with a double reed, same, same kind of reed in there. And this reed, when I blow into it, it crows. This is what's called the crow. That's the reed vibrating, opening and closing. Now here it is, a little more control. And that's really working like my vocal cords, I think. And then I put it on this amplifier, and that's what makes the, this is the instrument that is the 
the Renaissance version of the oboe, it's the Chambre. This is, I think of this instrument in one of two ways. I either think I'm playing in C like a soprano instrument or in G like a G alto kind of instrument, depending on the music I'm reading. But in fact, the bottom note is D. But in fact, the bottom note is D at A465, which means it's a modern E flat. So they didn't think the same pitch as we did, same ways, and they differed by instruments. But this is a, um, this was that instrument they used for improvising dance tunes over dance music. And I'll give you just a little, here's what it sounds like. instrument very directional you can see if, will I kill you if I do this here's a directional how so this is really made for outdoor playing they're made to play in in pairs of shams or in trios or quartets with trombones or trumpets and they're made to play really pure intervals so when you hear a fifth on this a pure fifth boom, it rings out um, improvisational style they use syncopation things like this So they call this instrument the dulcian, or the fagot, which means sticks, fags of wood together, or the bachon, bassoon. This is the mm. French started calling this the bassoon in the 17th century. Mm. But here, let's see. Doesn't have the same range as a modern bassoon. I can't really do right of spring on it too well. I can't quite get up to right of spring on this, but um, you can you can see the instrument quality is a little beefier than a little less refined from our modern standpoint. But it it cuts through an ensemble of shams, and this was this was an instrument that was also popular using for doing variations. If I go.